I literally have no idea what I'm gonna do for this video. Basically, I had this plan. I had <laughs> it's still recording, yeah? Yeah. No, I did you. <laughs> so I had this plan for this video, and the whole idea was that we were gonna use sunlight from this window to light our food. And the sun went away. As it does. As it tends to do at the end of the day. So now we don't have any sunlight. Um, so we're gonna have to find ways to make it work. I have some ideas. This is now gonna be a DIY low budget lighting video for food photography extraordinaire. Let's go, okay. Christ. God. So we're gonna have to repurpose some lighting equipment. I'm gonna go into the bathroom. These are what we're gonna need. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> oh God, what are we gonna do? Okay, you know what, we'll deal with that later. We still need lights. Please, don't break it. I won't. Oh God. We're gonna make it seem like this is just comes out of the bathroom. Okay, so what we're gonna do is repurpose this uh, bathroom lighting fixture. It's about $15 at Home Depot. You also need one of these uh, connecty cable thingies to plug it into the wall with. This should be a nice soft light source for the, for the food photography. These are just bulbs that were in the bathroom. I don't know how much they cost. <laughs> they were here when I moved in. <laughs> so since we don't have a sun, this is gonna be our key light. Luckily, we only needed four, not five, because I broke the other one. Okay, so another thing we're gonna use is this white foam core paper uh, board, because it's white and it'll bounce light back in to fill the shadows. Yeah, that's about it. <laughs> what else do we need? Do you okay. need a $2,000 camera? You need a camera, but we'll get to that point later. Here we have our food. We need to find a place with an outlet. This video is gonna suck. <laughs> Maybe we can do it right here. Okay. I'm gonna plug it in here. Um, I think that'll work. Well, actually, that'll work. Basically, the most important thing when it comes to lighting is having it be very direction. Wait, the opposite of direction. Nice. The important thing about lighting is to have it come from an angle, like the behind or the side or something, not just shining straight on. Otherwise, it just looks kind of boring and there's no shadows and there's no depth. So we're gonna set this up a little bit to the side here and hope that doesn't fall down. <laughs> okay. How precarious does that look on a scale of one to 10? That, that's, a, that's a solid seven. Seven out of 10 precarious? Yeah, absolutely. That's what we strive for. I'll put a shoe on the back. Oh God. Christopher. <laughs> We've got some exposed wiring back here. Shoes have rubber soles, which don't conduct electricity. Okay. Nailed it. <laughs> Nailed it. Already it doesn't look that bad, but uh, it's definitely not as soft and diffuse as we'd want and you can definitely tell that we have light coming from four different little sources here. So we're gonna need to do something to change it up a little bit. I have just the thing. Oh, I think it's in my car. Hold on, I need my keys. I can never find my keys ever. The darnest places. Field trip. There's actually a couple things. Cooking stone thing. This bad boy. I'm stealing Alex's palm souffles. Supremes. Supremes. There you go. Potatoes. <laughs> you know, if I broke this table, can you imagine? I wouldn't put it past you. Dude. God damn it. I just destroyed the plate. <laughs> Christ. Okay, wait, we're gonna have to replate that. How bad did I f*** it up? It's fine. I put in so much f***ing work and Chris just shows up like he doesn't give a shit about anything. Like this didn't take me six f***ing hours. 
like he doesn't understand that this means everything to me. I'm just trying to get No, it's okay, I'll just fix it, I'll fix it. It's okay. Friends like Alex, they're the best. Fuck, they put up with your shit. All right, so this thing is a, I think it's called a five-in-one diffuser slash reflector kit thing. It's like 15 bucks on Amazon. We're gonna use this to just create some nice diffusion. That works pretty well. One more thing we're gonna do. We wanna have complete control over the light, so we're gonna shut off all the ambient light in the room. Because we don't want extraneous shadows, extraneous filling in of shadows. All the lights are going off, baby. I don't know why I even tried. This is the sketchiest lighting setup I think I've ever made. <laughs> and that's saying something. <laughs> So now we've got our key light set up and it looks pretty good. I'm just gonna put this foam core in between our beautiful plate and the light and that's gonna just bounce some light back into the shadows on the food here. Make sure it looks really nice and even. This should be pretty close. The lens I'm using, by the way, is a $100 Canon 50mm f1.8. It's a great lens for a really low price to get that fast of an aperture. Now, getting the aperture down to f1.8 is really important for this type of photography because we want to have a very shallow depth of field so that the food looks really nice and there's a blurry background and uh, you isolate your subject better. So, 50 millimeter 1.8, great lens. Now, I think we're getting some pretty good shots. I'm gonna change a little bit up with the uh, sort of, uh, the, the, the set. We're gonna change the set up a little bit. I'm gonna bring in this nice looking stone thing because it's a nice color. And so now, it's a lot nicer than this glass table in the background. A shoe? A shoe. Oh, don't hold this up. Yeah, actually good call. Shoes are a great way to stand your lights. Like overhead shots here. And the shoe's in the way. <laughs> hey, that actually works pretty well. There you go, no shoe needed. No shoe needed at all. Okay. You know, this actually is looking pretty good <laughs> <laughs> on camera for how sketchy it is. I need something to stand on. The chair? No, that, dude, I'm not gonna stand on that. <laughs> Let's just get sketchier by the second. I'm guys. gonna fall and just break everything. Woo! You know, I think it's looking pretty good. All things considered, I think we're doing a pretty good job here. This is a budget lighting tutorial after all, so, you know, not everybody has a DSLR camera, but pretty much everybody has a smartphone. This is a pretty crappy smartphone. Well, it's not that crappy, but it's old iPhone 5 SE. This is the phone I have. But we're still gonna get a pretty good picture with this because. It's really all about the lighting. One sort of tip for you, the smartphone stuff is smartphones don't have really good depth of field, generally speaking. So taking shots like from down at you know, a side angle like this aren't gonna look as good as like overhead shots because the depth of field doesn't matter when you're doing an overhead shot. You're always focusing on the same point right below the camera. But this has more depth in the shot and therefore you need a shallow depth of field to blow out that background. So these ones are gonna look better on smartphones. Overhead shots. There we go. That looks pretty good. Not so bad. Pop that into Lightroom, do a couple little uh, adjustments onto it, and you got a great Instagram post. Wonderful. Millennials, gonna, you're gonna really use this tutorial a lot. Gonna be really beneficial. Yeah. I still feel alive. See, I'm gonna change this up a little bit. I just f***ed it up completely. It landed right on the pitch. I actually hate you. <laughs> I like hate who you are. And this makes our friendship difficult. <laughs> and, and every time I think it gets better, it only gets worse. I think we finished this one. Since I f***ed it up, I think we, we're done. <laughs> Dish number two. Same setup, pretty much. Exactly, actually, I didn't change anything. <laughs> I do want this, like, here. You gonna hold it? No. This is why we have shoes. 
It's all a balancing act, folks. So we're back shooting at f1.8 on the 50 millimeter. It's a Canon 5D Mark III, but literally you can get the same results pretty much on any other camera. I'm not shooting at a high ISO, I'm at ISO 400. Um, so the low light capabilities of this thing aren't really coming into play. You could get the same results on like a Canon T5i if you want it. Let's see what we got here. Well, I'd say that's looking pretty good already. I always like to just kind of go from different angles, you know, just because you never know what you're gonna like. Are you saying that you should take a lot of pictures? Like a lot of quantity of pictures? No, I'm saying you should take a lot of quantity of angles. Like from behind. I bet that's gonna look fantastic. Nope. No, that doesn't look nope. that looks Absolutely bad. not. Is this salmon what is it? A salmon log? It's a roulade here. Oh, it's a salmon roulade? Yeah, that's alright. Okay. Salmon roulade. <laughs> I think we pretty much got it all. And now we're just gonna throw it in the garbage. Yeah, exactly. AKA my mouth. Wait, can we actually eat it? Now? We can. Really? Yeah. You wanna share it? Best part about food photography, especially when Alex Felix is cooking, you get to eat it afterwards and it's delicious. Well, you don't always get to eat it because sometimes they put crazy things in there like, you know, shaving cream in food photography, but we don't do that because we want it to be authentic. So, that's our, uh, 30, what was it? Under $50 professional lighting setup for food photography. Completely improvised with random things in the house. Like, comment, subscribe. Let's eat this thing now. <laughs> oh, baby. Oh, God, you destroyed that.